perfect pitch. The perfect pitch. Um, it's not necessarily as perfect as it sounds to be. There are generally two types of perfect pitches. Um, one being absolute pitch, where you can hear anything, like the air conditioning that's running right now, and I can say, oh, that sounds very close to G sharp, somewhere between G sharp and A. Um, that would be really, really good uh, absolute pitch. And there's another perfect pitch that can be acquired, uh, relative pitch. You train your ears to really know one specific pitch, which a lot of orchestral um, musicians do. You really get that 440A just right on, and then you would use that relative pitch to determine what other pitches surrounding you are. For a singer, uh, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword because sometimes it's really good when doing modern music and they have 12 tone just jumping around and you're just like, oh, 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 oh. and you can just easily find the notes. But also, as a countertenor and doing a lot of Baroque music, we do tune differently. Sometimes it's at 415 hertz as A. Sometimes it's 392, I think that's French Baroque pitch. Mozart sometimes tunes at 430. And a lot of orchestras in um, Germany and Vienna, um, I, they tune really high at 443. So each time you need to just kind of a bit. But it's a good, good tool, good tool. I discovered my perfect pitch through my father's boss's wife, who was a piano teacher. And she heard me at some a company party, and she somehow found out that I had a perfect pitch. And she just went to my mom and said, hey, your son has perfect pitch. You should probably teach him some music. So my mom said, OK. Um, Let's start with piano lessons, and that's how I started my music lessons. My confidence with perfect pitch kind of went in and out because uh, when I first discovered it, it's, it's kind of like children learning to ski. They're so fearless, you don't really think too much about it. There's no self-doubt. So they can ski really well on Black Diamonds, and I could name pitches really well when I was very young, and then once when further into my musical training, I started to doubt myself, especially when I started violin. Oh, so I discovered my perfect pitch when I was around five or six. And I started violin when I was around 10. My violin teacher told me, as a violinist, I should know where my 440A is. And she really drilled that into me. And I knew where that was, but each time I would just second guess because my teacher was very scary. But Fast forward another 10 years when I was singing by this point, well, hearing a note and knowing what that is is very different from producing the right note. And on an instrument, you can just kind of find it because you're still hearing it, but vocal instrument, it lives in the body. So you can never hear your own voice. That's why it sounds weird when you record yourself and I'm just like, this is what I really sound like. When I am singing, of course, there are so many other things happening that uh, can affect my pitch. And I know the result is not necessarily always perfect, which kind of breaks my heart, but also gives me a challenge to work on it and make it better.